viewer discretion is advised in this video. I am going to be talking about very sensitive topics surrounding mental health. As the beginning of this video is more lighthearted and easy to digest, it gets a lot more difficult to listen to as it progresses. If you are someone that struggles with your mental health and are triggered by certain topics surrounding that, please skip this video. Although I have a very important message that I want to send to people, I also do not want to do it at the cost of causing anybody else to go into a bad place in their mind. Today we are going to be talking about the Love Island problem. I love reality TV. It's my guilty pleasure binging some really shitty, juicy reality TV that sometimes isn't exactly like reality. It's actually kind of quite scripted to fit a dramatic narrative to keep the viewer, me, hooked on watching it and wanting more and more and more and more. Even though it's reality TV and I know all of it is scripted and dramatized in ways, I felt like Love Island gave me more of a realistic glimpse into a yes a very unrealistic situation where there's like a bunch of people that live in their bathing suits and locked in a villa which isn't realistic at all but I felt like I was seeing more of these people's personalities and who they were so we're gonna talk about what Love Island is and the show in general and all of the controversies that has surrounded this show because it is so much more than just a show with a bunch of hot people locked in a villa looking for love and a chance at winning 50,000 pounds at the end and what the contestants can't see while they're in the villa is what the rest of the world can and that's all the disgusting and vile and cruel things that people would say about them on the internet. And that is where we begin and where we are also going to end. Love Island is a British dating show that started in 2015. It was actually a revival of a 2005 show that was canceled in 2006 by the same name that actually had celebrities in it. Oh, welcome to Love Island, a tropical paradise in the heart of the South Pacific. I'm now home to 12 celebrities who you are about to control every aspect of their life. I had never heard of most of the participants on Celebrity Love Island, but the one person I do know about is Liz McLarnie who was one of three girls in a band called Atomic Kitten. But the revival of Love Island had normal everyday people in it. Now, some people are like, it's not normal everyday people because it's people that all have a specific body type that some people view as unrealistic and that it sets unrealistic body standards of what people should look like. Everybody knows that the Love Island contestants, they're going to be fit, they're going to be in shape, and a lot of people have an issue with that. But at the end of the day, it is everyday people. But these everyday people in the show are referred to as Islanders. They all enter a secluded villa that is full of cameras that watch their every single move, kind of like Big Brother. The premise of the show is that every islander must stay coupled up in order to stay in the villa and to not only have a chance at love, but also to have a chance at 50,000 pounds. Here on Love Island, to be in with a chance of winning, that 50 grand, you have to be in a couple, whether you're doing it for love or money. On the first day in the villa, islanders are coupled up based on first impressions. Lucy, why did you step forward? I've got my surfer dude type, then I've got like bad boy type with like tattoos and the piercing. <laughs> but as things progress, they are forced to remain in a couple with who they originally coupled up with or recouple in recoupling ceremonies. So I've decided to recouple. regularly more women and men are dumped into the villa as time progresses in uneven numbers. Someone is always going to go home and there is a lot of broken hearts. There's a lot of drama. She just called me a slag. Yeah, I did call you a fucking slag. Stupid bitch. This is funny too. Oh, oh, what do you think you are? You're Shut up, you're dead! What the fuck? She's a dickhead. Oh, yeah, what what the fuck? Fuck? But most of the time, they just kind of lounge around the pool and have conversations about the couple that they're in or what's going on with other people in the villa. They work out a lot, drink a lot of water. They're hydrated as a fuck in that show. Like have a sip of water every time one of them do in the show and you will be hydrated, trust me. They have a lot of really funny phrases in the show that everybody knows and recognizes. I'm loyal though, I'm loyal. I'm a loyal person. I am loyal. On paper. And on paper. On, on paper. I got a text. I got a text. I've got a text. Go text! 
But the most interesting thing about Love Island is that while you're watching the show, they are all currently in the villa and the public can actually have a say so on what goes on inside of it. Last night, a vote was open to decide whether Cassidy or Mac was more likely to find love in the villa. At the end, the public votes for their favorite couple that gets to win the 50,000 pounds. The winners of Love Island 2019 Ah, Greg and Amber! But at the end, there's a catch. They get an envelope and they open them at the same time. And one of them will have something in the envelope that basically says they get to make this decision while the other one doesn't. And the decision is... They can keep the 50,000 pounds and split up from the person that they're coupled up with at the end, or they split the 50,000 pounds evenly between them and the person that they're coupled up with. Of course I'm gonna share it with you. Yeah! It sounds like fun and games, but with the public involved, things can get pretty nasty, and it does. Sometimes the show spices things up, and during some of the games, they will actually show the Islanders what the public is saying. Islanders, it's time to find out what the public really think in today's challenge. As you can imagine, it's not always so nice. Like, sometimes the tweets that they'll show, the Islanders expose things that other people in the villa has said that the public has seen that maybe they didn't know about. Y'all gonna tell Blank the real truth of what happened with Blank and Caso Moore because what he said was not even half of what really happened. Sometimes they just reveal who the public isn't a fan of. Like I watched one season where the public for whatever reason didn't like Molly. I always really liked Molly. I thought she was funny. I liked Molly and Tommy together, but the public just didn't really like her and she literally would just drive herself nuts in the villa just trying to figure out why the public didn't like her. Like she was really judged as being artificial and in the show for the money and and that was just the public's perspective of who Molly was. Lo and behold, after the show, they're still together. Joke's on them, you know what I mean? I think this is just the Islanders' like first glimpse of the reality that they are no longer unknown people. I mean, some of them have like social media presence and stuff before they got on the show, but they are now known on a very wide scale. People watch them from all over the world and outside of the villa is full of people that are watching and criticizing their every single move. And I mean, imagine what it would be like to be locked in this villa and to know that the that the world is watching you and they have these preconceived opinions of you and you can't figure out why they don't like you. You're just like, I'm just living my life. I'm not doing anything wrong. Regardless, the show has a massive fan base, myself included. It's currently on its seventh season. There are people in a villa right now as I'm filming this video, but with as much love as Love Island has gotten, it's also been criticized for a lot of controversies surrounding the show, and there are a lot of people that think that it should be canceled. During earlier seasons of Love Island, they actually left very little to the imagination. They would show contestants naked, would show a lot more than I felt that they should have showed for the sake of the contestants. One of my favorite seasons was actually season two because I really liked most of the people on it. Zara Holland, Sophie Gradon, and then my favorite favorite couple, Kara and Nathan. There's this adorable scene where Kara's talking about, we're gonna go to Disneyland with all of our babies and stuff like that. And then peep in the future, like at Disneyland with their babies. Like I can literally cry. There's also things that are not so fun. And that's where Zara Holland comes in, who was actually crowned Miss Great Britain. During one of the episodes, there was a new Islander that was brought into the villa by the name of Alex Bowen or Bowen. Alex Bowen, it's probably Bowen. Zara was only 20 years old at the time and made the adult decision that she had the right to do to actually sleep with Alex. Now the show literally aired so much of this that there was a lot of criticism, sex shaming, and just a lot of nastiness. There was even sex shaming coming from some of the Islanders in the show. They bang? Yeah. She bang her yet? <gasps> She's an absolute idiot. <laughs> what a stupid girl. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. For me, I had a big issue with that because I'm like, well, you put a bunch of people in a villa and they're all half naked all the time and they're all young and, you know, hormonal, which is completely normal. Of course, of course they're gonna wanna hook up. That's completely normal. So why would anybody that's watching it even judge them for that? Like, obviously that's something that they're gonna wanna do and that's okay. There should be no shaming involved in that whatsoever. It's not a bad thing. Yeah. I just feel like everyone's gonna judge me. 
So they both, I think, made a mistake, but it's not the end of the world. But unfortunately, this decision for Zara actually cost her a lot, including her crown as Miss Great Britain. We gave our permission for Zara to enter, obviously to go into Love Island yes. as our current winner. Under the stipulation, she did not have sex on TV. Mm -hmm. Zara fully agreed to this and knowingly went against our wishes. Now, so from their point of view, they're kind of looking at it thinking to themselves, you did, you knew exactly what you were doing yeah. and you did this and therefore, no, they, they had to take your crown away. Well, then they never said to me that I couldn't have they didn't. sex on TV. But then maybe they thought it was a given. She leaves the show eventually because there was an issue where her mom got really sick and apparently the show was like begging her to stay on, but she decided to leave it because of her mom, which I totally understand. But you can imagine like what she was going through. Like she was already struggling on the show with like not being chosen and people not wanting her and stuff. And the new boys got to rate everyone sort of in order of which they think was the hottest girl and how much banter there was in the group and I was the fourth fittest girl and I didn't apparently have much banter so you start to think oh god am I really boring and am I not pretty. But those episodes just they just rubbed me the wrong way because it was the sexism of a woman losing anything at all for having consensual sex with a man that lost literally nothing. I mean, seeing her be sex shamed and humiliated on TV made to feel guilty for having a normal human encounter. What were you thinking? Did you <laughs> did you just forget that it was on the telly? Or were you in this little bubble that you kind of yeah. thought? Yeah, do you know what, literally, it was, it was in the moment and I made the biggest mistake of my life. That was my first taste of things that I didn't like. I loved that the show showed so much originally, but after that I could see how they show too much. Like the fact that they aired as much of, as they did of it on TV expecting that there would be no repercussions to Zara. Yes, when people get on this show, they know that there's cameras everywhere. So they know that everything they say and do is going to be aired on TV. So they do have responsibility in that. But I also think a lot of these people that get on this show, they're very young and they may not understand fully how much this stuff will actually affect their life. Like she had no idea that making that decision would make her lose her crown. When we fast forward to current times, Zara has stated that she's now on antidepressant that she believes is due to being on the show and the lack of mental health help that she received after she left it. When she left, she suffered like a string of panic attacks. She blames it on Love Island. She says that she had to check herself into therapy. Been on a reality TV show, a lot of struggles come with it after. But it's just so easy to go on and see what people think of you, I guess. And if people say, oh, you're annoying or, you know, you've got such a square face. People can be really nasty. Do you think that you were prepared enough for that? No, absolutely no way was I prepared enough. And I'd probably say, hand on my heart, the majority of people from my series would say the same. A spokesperson told the press that Zara has spoken to the production team regularly since she left the villa. Not one person rang me from the production team at all. They also stated that prior to going on the show that the Islanders are all given medical appraisals that include psychological assessments. However, Zara said that the psychological assessment was only five minutes long. I know things have changed now and they've brought a scheme in um, that's a lot more sort of in depth. I wish it had happened in our series. Another contestant by the name of Malin a Anderson, she also criticized the show for its lack of psychological evaluation. She wrote a piece online talking about the online trolls and the bullying that she experienced leaving the show. People would regularly mock her appearance to the point of leaving her insecure of her, her own body. And she was actually bullied to the point of feeling too ugly to be famous in her words and turned to plastic surgery. Comments about my breasts and that they look like like dog ears and that they were saggy and full of stretch marks. Cellulite, Sally, <laughs> you know, there's loads I'm laughing now, but at the time it was like, you know, awful. And then when my daughter passed away, it was like, I'm glad your baby's dead. So these trolling is just sick, it's sick. It's like a sick disease. And I'm telling you guys these things because there are way more severe issues and controversies surrounding the show. That is the deaths that seem to surround Love Island. And not only has there been a string of people that have taken their own lives that were a part of the show, but there's also contestants that have contemplated it or received mental health help after the show because of what it did to their mental health after being on it. After leaving the show, it's been 
quite hard. I think the worst thing I've seen about myself online is that I'm too dark, I'm too skinny, and that I'm ugly. On Love Island, I didn't even know what anxiety was. You don't know what mental state anyone's in. Like, you can see them on Instagram, but you don't know the thoughts that kind of go through their head. We're gonna talk about Sophie Gradon. She was born Sophie Hannah Gradon on the 25th of October on 1985. And in 2008, she actually won the title of Miss Newcastle. And then in 2009, she won the title of Miss Great Britain. She worked as a marketing manager and raised money for charities. When she was a contestant on Love Island, she was first with Tom and then later coupled up with Katie Salmon, which was Love Island's first same sex pairing. In 2018, she was a part of a talk on social media about its impact on children. She told the cyberbullying conference that she descended into a dark place after the show because of vicious online abuse. She told the conference that the action was needed because kids as young as nine are taking their own lives and that online bullying is as destructive as face-to-face -face bullying, sometimes even worse. Trolls leave you feeling vulnerable, unsafe, and upset. She also said, no one anticipated Love Island's success and in an instant, I was catapulted from everyday life into the limelight. We became public property overnight and everyone had an opinion, both good and bad. On leaving the show, I descended into quite a dark place owing to the amount of negativity focused on me. There were positives and some lovely people, but I would always let the negatives outweigh the positives. I started to believe what these people were saying about me was true. In Sophie's final interview, she spoke to Radio Air alongside Zara Holland about the effects that the trolls and online bullying had on them after leaving the show. And the things that she says after knowing what happened is absolutely heartbreaking. I mean, commenting on the way you look, the way you talk. It was very hard to deal with because you take it as you're being judged on you as a person, but they don't know you. But it can really, really get into your mind mm -hmm. and really, really begin to affect you. The harsh reality is that it can end up with that victim taking their own life. As we've seen in the media, it has happened. Can you imagine being responsible for that? Sophie was very public about her struggles with her mental health and with her depression and anxiety. And unfortunately, that later would result in her taking her own life. And I will not get into the details about how any of these contestants took their own life. I'm just simply discussing that this happened and why this happened because I think it's very very important to talk about. The thing that's really sad about this and makes it even worse is that she was actually found by her boyfriend Aaron Armstrong and 20 days later after the trauma that he experienced from the situation and the heartbreak of her loss he actually also took his own life. Now we're going to be talking about another contestant that I'm not going to be able to say his last name correctly so please forgive me for that, but his name is Mike the Lassitis. Mike was born on January 19th, 1993, and he was a British footballer. He appeared on the third season of Love Island, and he was also on another dating series called Celebs Go Dating. While Mike was on the show, he also experienced a lot of online bullying, and he actually got the nickname Muggy Mike, and there was an entire hashtag from it. Mike would be the second Love Island contestant to take his own life at only 26 years old. He was found dead in a park by a jogger. With him, he had a notebook that had messages to his family. Another contestant on Love Island by the name of Montana Brown said that he was in a very, very dark place in the months before his death. He did go through a really rough time, um, November, December time, and I know he was really, really struggling. The work wasn't coming in, he'd finished celebs go dating, the buzz had kind of gone, and he didn't really know what to do for work. I think the stress really, really got to him, and he kind of thought, you know, this fame, isn't what it's cracked up to be. He opened up and he said, I've been to see a therapist. The therapist just wanted to talk about his his feelings. And I think he just wanted someone to tell him, how do I get out of this dark place? How do I make myself feel better? Now we need to talk about Caroline Flack that was born Caroline Louise Flack on the 9th of November, 1979. She was an English television and radio presenter and she won the 12th series Strictly Come Dancing. <laughs> She also presented on The X Factor and she was the presenter on Love Island. It's gonna be a long, hot summer. 
There was a lot of controversy that was surrounding Caroline Flack before she passed away. In 2011, she dated Harry Styles when he was only 17 years old and she was in her 30s. The age of consent in the United Kingdom is 16 years old, but people still had an issue with this. She did receive like huge backlash for the age gap and even received death threats. I obviously do not think it's right for people in their 30s to be dating teenagers, but I also don't think it's all right to send death threats to somebody. On December 13th, 2009, Caroline was charged with assaulting her boyfriend, Louis Burton, after an incident reported by him. When the police had arrived, they found her covered with blood and they reported that she confessed, I did it, I whacked him round the head like that, to them before warning that she would take her own life. They later found that she had actually hit and attacked him while he slept because she thought he was cheating and that he had suffered a head wound. And then later on December 17th, she stood down from hosting Love Island in order to not detract attention from the upcoming series. It was clear to see that she was struggling with her mental health as well, but when all of this came out in the public that she had assaulted her boyfriend, obviously everybody online went crazy and people said horrible things. I think it's very normal to be upset at hearing that someone assaults someone, but what isn't normal is people bullying and saying terrible things. People telling people to take their own lives. People that are already struggling with their mental health having to read some of the things that were being said by the public is horrible. I need to take a quick pause from this video that I'm editing because of something that has just recently come out about the current season of Love Island and the online bullying that is happening right now. As I am in the process of editing this video where we are talking about the trolls and the online bullying, one of the current contestants, Chloe Burrows, has been receiving hundreds of death threats. Love Island issued a statement that says, we want Love Island to be a positive experience for all of our cast and their friends and family members. Last night's episode created strong reactions, but some viewers' posts were wholly unacceptable. We take these matters extremely seriously and will support cast members and their families in reporting such posts. We would once again urge all of our viewers to think before posting and remember that our Islanders are people with feelings. A former contestant, Amy Hart, who was on series six of Love Island, was also a victim to online harassment while she was on the show. She stated that she is so angry trolling is still happening and called on social media giants to punish those involved. She said, trolling is not acceptable and should be a punishable offense. These are real people with real feelings and it does affect them and their loved ones. It's time to make changes and it's time the social media platforms clamped down. The owner of Instagram, which is Facebook, is currently investigating the abuse that Chloe Burrows received through direct messages. At the age of 40 years old on February 15th, 2020, Caroline Flack was found dead in her flat. Like Sophie and Mike, Caroline also took her own life. And this is when things just progressed with people thinking that Love Island needed to be canceled even more. And that brings me to where I wanted to go with this. And I might possibly have an unpopular opinion. I don't feel like it is a Love Island or reality TV problem as much as it is a societal issue. In the beginning, I expressed my love for reality TV and how it helps me escape my problems and I can get lost in a world that doesn't feel like my own. But the problem with this is, is that some people do that and they completely forget the humanity and some of the people that they're watching. Like whether it be out of jealousy or insecurity or pent up anger for their own personal life problems. Some people watch TV and even YouTubers or just people in general and they watch it to critique their every move. If they like something about you, they want to find something that they don't like about you and try and make that louder to validate their own insecurities and to make themselves feel better. Think that their opinions must be voiced in very loudly because hurting others makes them feel like they were powerful in a world where they consistently feel powerless. Some people take the path of being an online bully and a troll to justify their sick thoughts thoughts instead of trying to fix it and to become a better person. I've seen online bullying in many forms, like making fun of people's appearance, tearing them down to the last tiniest little details of their bodies, like every single person in this world doesn't have flaws. People talking about others in gossip forums, like for YouTube, there's literally entire forums that's just to shit on people and talk bad about them and 
and pick apart every single thing about them just because they don't like them. And then stuff like what happens to Love Island contestants, like what I'm talking about in this video. People seeing a bunch of people in bikinis and thinking that that gives them some sort of right to rip apart their bodies and faces like they're literally made of emotionless paper. I don't think Love Island is the problem because I think Love Island could exist in a world where people don't take to an app on their phone to call people horrific names and bully them to the point of them feeling like they literally have no way out but one. Love Island and other reality TV shows could exist in a world where people can just watch people in a unique situation and find entertainment in it without going to the internet or tabloids to bully them about their bodies and their appearance and every single little tiny detail that they say as if every single person in this world doesn't have physical and mental flaws. Every person alive has done something wrong or said something wrong or has a stretch mark or a pimple or pores on their face or cellulite. We all have these things because it's normal. Like we live in a world now where I have been so insecure over my forehead wrinkles because everyone is getting Botox in their foreheads and acting as if having wrinkles up there isn't normal. When it's normal, we live in a society where people see someone on their screen and they think that they don't hurt the same way that they do. There's a saying that I've always heard that says, hurt people hurt people. And the cycle of that literally continues until somebody has had enough and takes their own life in the hands of every single person that ever said anything cruel to them online. Their blood is and always will be on the hands of the person that bullied them. If you have ever taken to the internet to say something terrible about another person or to harass them and they lost their life, they are six feet under the ground because of you. I think canceling shows like Love Island and just eliminating all reality TV from this life and pretending like it never existed, it doesn't fix the problem because the problem lies in our society. The problem lies in us not being held accountable when we do something wrong. Social media is still so new. Like when I was a kid, it didn't exist. It's brand new. And I think we're seeing the effects of social media on our society today. And we need to get a grip on it and we need to do something about it. I've seen people say that, you know, they know what they're getting into before they get on this show, but that doesn't mean that they deserve the online bullying. That doesn't mean that. Like, I feel like people who say that that's what you get because you got on it, you're the same kind of people that do it. There is a severe problem with the way that people think that they can talk about others on the internet and just get away with it. Like, I get it. Like, life is really hard and we need some sort of escape, but if your escape is to bully other people to the point of them taking their own life. You're a disgusting, vile human being. I'm really interested to hear your guys' thoughts because, you know, like I said, this is coming from someone that is a fan of Love Island. I would be really sad if it got canceled. I just wish people could watch stuff and appreciate it for what it is and enjoy it without being so mean and disgusting. And the only thing that I can hope for this world is that people become better and not worse, that people learn how to love each other and to be kind and to walk in kindness. It's not cute or fun or cool to be a mean girl. The world can always use more good people. And I really hope that if you didn't know about all of this stuff and if maybe you've watched television or even YouTubers and you heavily criticize them, I hope this helps you remember that you don't know them and you don't know what's going on when they're not recording. You don't know these people. At the end of the day, everybody is a person. We need to walk with kindness and love and we need to work on being better. And if you are someone that has ever online bullied someone or bullied them in person, I hope that you know that that doesn't mean that you are damned to forever be that way. You can change. You can become better and make right. You don't have to stay that way just because you chose that path. You can become a better person. If you guys enjoyed this video and you would like to see more videos on topics that fascinate me and things that I would like to talk about, please give this video a thumbs up. I would greatly appreciate it. And if you would like to leave me a comment, whether it just be emoji or just 
anything. Your comments really help the YouTube algorithm push my videos out there. And if there's any that I want people to see, it's this one because I really want to send this message to people and also to remember some of the lives that are lost since we are currently on season seven of Love Island. I hope that if you watch the show that this is a reminder to you to be kind always and to think before you post. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you guys so much and I will be seeing you very soon for another video. Bye guys.